Hi, John with eTrailer. Today, we have a 2018 Chevy Silverado 3500, and we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Pace Edwards Switchblade Retractable Hardtop Tonneau Cover. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the bed cover here. This does sit flush in the bed, which is nice. Uh, you're not going to have any problems as far as visibility from the back. This is a hard cover with a vinyl top. It's aluminum, and it has vinyl on top of it. As far as function, uh, you can lower the tailgate. You've got a switch here, squeeze handle, and it will retract all the way in the back. It's a good option for keeping your equipment clean and dry if you have the fifth wheel guys. Uh, the clearance in here is pretty decent. Uh, we have a tie down handle on there just to keep it out of the way, but um, if you don't have anything like that, if you have camping equipment and everything else, these are great. It has rain gutters up in the front. Uh, so if water does get in through this system here, it will drain and exit out through the bottom of the bed. With the cover retracted into the canister, it still leaves you up in the front here with just about 13 inches from the bottom of the bed up to the bottom of the canister. Um, as far as clearances with the bed cover closed, I just got a measurement from the top of the bed rail here to the bottom of the cover. Just so you know, in case you have equipment like fifth wheel or gooseneck, uh, about 20 and a half. So with it closed, it has a fairly large tailgate seal here, which is nice because once the tailgate closes, that's going to keep rain and dust out. If you have a locking tailgate like this one, this also secures your cargo better than a soft top. So this cover is a quick install too. The only tools we needed was an 11 millimeter socket and a Phillips head screwdriver. The rest of it is being held down by four clamps. We have two on this side and two on the other side. Uh, you could probably get this installed in about 15 minutes or so, maybe 20 minutes the first time, but uh, to pull it out in case you're hauling something big and you need all of your bed space, it comes out the exact same way with the same tools. It's super simple. If you want to see how we did it, stick around and I'll show you step by step how we installed this. First step you're going to do is uh, go ahead and wrap the handle around the canister twice. Now this is still pretty light, but this just gives you a handle here and then you can use the flange and lift it up. And what we're going to do is center it in the truck bed. So once we have it setting on the bed rails, you can use a tape measure. You just want it to be fairly equal on either side. You can use a tape measure and go from this flange here to the side of the bed rail. The next step is going to be to install the rails. Uh, and you need to identify the left and right side. They actually have a sticker, uh, one for left and one for right, so that's easy enough. While you have it identified, go ahead and peel off this protective layer. Now, this foam isn't sticky. That just protects it during packaging and, and shipping. So we're going to flip this over, and you can set it on your rail here. And what you need to do is you're going to be inserting the handle here, this section, into this channel. And the plastic is going to go uh, below it as well. So we're only inserting this, and we're going to slide it up until it hits there. And I found if you kind of grab the handle, and feed it in. It'll fight you a little bit. Maybe pull forward, and that's it. That's about where you want to go. Now, there's an 11 millimeter bolt. It'll thread up from the bottom into the machined hole, and it'll hold that in place. I just have an 11 millimeter deep socket and a quarter inch ratchet. And these get tightened down just barely snug. You don't need to over tighten it right now. So our next step is to install the rail clamp. The longer clamp goes up to the front. The shorter clamp comes back by the tailgate side. Something that's not in the directions for whatever reason. Uh, when you assemble these, you're going to have a lock washer and a flat washer. They didn't specify this in the instructions, but we know this is supposed to be like this. So you're going to assemble these. And this is OK to assemble beforehand. It will fit up in the truck. Basically, you're going to have uh, the short clamp here, and we're going to attach it here. This bed goes under the rail, 
and this side attaches to the clamp on the rail. So we'll slide this through, grab a barrel nut, and just thread it on there slightly. And that give us enough room to install it. So under the rail, uh, there is a notch cut into the rail here where these will attach. What you're going to do, the easiest way I found, well you'll see a notch here and here. That's where it's going to sit in the rail. I'd start by attaching this on the underside of the rail at the notch. And this truck is equipped with bed lighting. It makes it a little bit difficult, but once you get the back side seated, then the front side will go in and you pull it back towards this block here. That's where your shim is. And it's going to get tight. Once that's there, we're going to tighten this down. We're not going to snug it yet. Um, you're going to do this at all four points on the truck and then we're going to square it up after this. The other notch for the front is located right here um, just for camera's sake so you can see what's going on but it's the same process as the back. You're going to fit the back in and then the front and you're going to slide it forward and tighten it down. So I just wanted to show you this front uh, V-notch up here. This was I was having some trouble trying to get this bracket on. It is okay uh, for this particular uh, model here to disassemble it and just get this part on. You can do this um, while it's located. This just made it a little bit easier. Again, I was going to set the back notch on the rail here and then slide it forward and that just seemed to work a little bit easier and then this goes up into the truck bed on the back side of the frame like that and then we just put our hardware on and the barrel nut in the back here. It's however you can do it to get that clamp on there and again don't don't snug this down too much, keep it loose because we're going to center and square up the rails. All right, as far as squaring the rails up, one of the first steps here is uh, we want to have the tailgate closed and we're going to show a gap on the tailgate right here. Uh, what we want and what we're looking for is a sixteenth of an inch, so you can just grab the rails. This is why we kept the clamps loose right now. When you come back, and we'll set that for this gap, just in case when you slam your tailgate, you don't want anything banging into the rail. And we'll do this on both sides. Okay, once we have it square with the tailgate, we'll go ahead and tighten the clamps down. We don't want to over tighten these, we just want them snug. We'll do this on the rear back here, up to the front, and then around to the other side. So the next step before we move on is we want to check the proper spacing from left to right rail. Uh, you're going to need to know your part number um, and that's going to be up here on the canister on the driver's side. You can see the part number here and you can refer back to your installation manual for the correct measurement but what you're going to do is you measure from this top side of the rail to the other side up here at the canister and then back here at the tailgate and you'll have minimum measurements that you need to be at or less than. So the next step is going to be uh, your pull handle. You want to unwrap that from the canister from when we carried it um, and I just attached it uh, down here at the loop point on the bed. Um, since this truck is equipped with a fifth wheel, uh, we can use the supplied Velcro. I'm going to attach it to the underside of this rail and we can stick it like that and it'll keep the handle from getting tangled up with the assembly here. The next step is going to be to install what they call kickstands. Um, it'll come like this. You're going to have this a flat washer, a lock washer, and a wing nut. What you want to do is you want to run this all the way back right now to give us the most room. This is going to install in this clamp here in the hole with this facing towards the bedside. We put on the flat washer, the lock washer, and the wing nut. Now the idea behind this is to, this is going to tighten against the bed and this is going to give this rail extra support. As we tighten it, it will actually raise this rail up. So this side is already supported by the canister and these don't. So that's why they put the kickstands in the back here. So what we're going to do is you're looking at your, your side of your truck bed here. We're going to run this down and we're going to try to keep it as flush as possible, meaning this part. Run it parallel with the bed. So we just run this down until it just touches. 
if these get off-centered or if they're at extreme angles like this, they will kick out and get loose on you. So this is kind of an important step, not super complicated. Just get it uh, set just about so it's even like that and we'll tighten the wing nut. And once the wing nut's tightened, you can give this a few turns while you're watching the level out here. Okay, next step, we have supplied lubricant. And what we're gonna be doing, this is just a cloth. We're gonna be lubricating the underside of the sweep seal here, and then there's a wear strip uh, down here. And this is what the cover rides on. This is why they have the lubricant. And it's basically just a cloth. If you have nitrile gloves or any gloves, you may want to wear them. This stuff could be um, irritating to your skin, but it's just, uh, just run this down. I start with the wear strip and then pick it up and run it down the seal here. And that's it. And you could go ahead and repeat that on both sides. So the next step is to install the rain gutters. Now, honestly, this is one of the steps where it's gonna be personal preference for you. You have a couple of options. You can either go through the floor. Um, a lot of these trucks already have holes, um, in, drain holes in the floor, but you'll have to drill through this, or you could drill into the backside of the bed here and run out that way. So your gutters will actually attach to your canister in this spot here. Now, the hardware that comes with it is gonna be a hollow tube, um, and then you've got the piece that actually attaches to your canister. Uh, this is a foam gasket, and then you have two locking tabs. And what the idea is gonna be is when you put it up into the canister, uh, you'll have two slots, put it up and turn. And it sounds easy enough, but once you have this foam washer in place, it's, it's kind of difficult. So I found um, that you can use a pair of pliers and kind of line it up with the tabs. Now you're not really squeezing, you don't wanna break it, but this just gives you enough pressure to be able to get up there and turn it. I like to put the fitting on first. So I'm applying pressure from the bottom and I turn the pliers to actually get that in there. This is one of those things that should be the easiest thing to do and it's not. So for our installation today, we've actually chosen this pre-existing um, bed drain hole uh, that we're gonna just enlarge in. Now, we went down to the hardware store, we picked up a plastic barb fitting here. Uh, this will just allow us to not drill such a large hole in the bed. So I'll drill the hole, that'll slide down through, and this threads up to the attached fitting at the bottom of your canister. So the last step is actually to attach the top cover. Now, you'll have, it says cab side, that'll be the rubber sweep, that goes towards your cab. And it's gonna attach with four supplied screws and it's gonna attach points here and here. So we just kinda place it over on both sides. And these are Phillip head and they already have Loctite on the screws. have two on this side and two on the driver's side. So with the top cover installed, the last step is just to check to make sure you got smooth action and nothing's loose. We'll bring that back, it locks into place, and we can check our clearances back here at the tailgate, which will be pretty good. This has a pretty large lip at the end here, and we can still see we have sixteenths of an inch on both sides. So it's a good seal. smooth action so we can call that install finished. That's going to do it for our look at the Pace Edwards switchblade retractable to no cover on our 2018 Chevy Silverado.